Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews, and this is Generation X Politics. This video is sponsored by contribution from Tanya, and here is her story. Hi, Ollie. My goal was to send you this when I relocated and share my victory. The narcissist has forced my hand now, and I'm in protective mode. My name is Tanya. I'm from Rochester, New York. You did several videos for me in fall of 2015. Lies the narcissistic parent tells themselves. Change the locks on your life with the narcissist and the narcissist and enablers know why you didn't show up. I remember that one. I found your channel in January 2014 after I googled why mothers hate their daughters. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, my videos used to pop up that easily on Google. Just bad mothers, why my mother hates me. Mine used to be, my channel used to be one of the first, first out there to show you how bad the algorithm is screwed with everything. From 2014 through 2015, I was introduced to NPD and listened to all the videos with similar upbringings, some worse than mine. I still find it hard to reconcile my abuse to those who had it much worse than me. In August 2013, I moved back to Rochester, New York to be closer to family. As the middle child, people pleaser, and scapegoat, I thought this time will be different. The fantasy I had in my mind was quashed months later at another dramatic holiday and a hard-boiled egg being thrown hard at my head the night before Thanksgiving by my mom. Oh, such a lovely mother, you know. They're all, they're all flowers, aren't they? You know, violent. The next month on Christmas Eve, she escalated and beat me as I was trapped on the couch and could not escape because I had broken my ankle the day before after slipping on the wet floor. The icing, the icing was during the beating, which involved punches to my head. My little sister, who was in her early 20s, arrived home and saw my, mother, saw my mom beating me. She gave side-eyed and walked past like it was normal. Once I was free from the monster, I limped upstairs. My little sister said, great, you made her mad. Now she's going to take it out on me in her 20s. In, in, in her 20s, still worried about getting beaten from her mother. Both of you. This was not a stretch for my mom. I was living with my parents until I found my own place after moving back. My mom convinced me to stay for the winter to save money. I moved out by spring. When I was learning how to read as a five-year-old, I could not pronounce the word roof. We were still living in Ukraine at the time, so it was the Ukrainian word for roof. My mom hovered over me and kept slapping me. Okay. So Ukrainian, I forgot about that. Old communist block woman. Old commie bitch woman. Mean, vicious, nasty. Puts all her value in her vagina. Cold. She made me sit there till I pronounced it correctly. My only escape was when she finally slapped me hard enough that blood burst from my lip like a fountain. Then she stopped. We immigrated to the USA in 1989. You did a video for me the day after Thanksgiving in 2015 when I didn't show up. <clears throat> the, narcissist enabler, the narcissist and enablers know why you didn't show up. I saw the, the one I remember. I think you were wondering if you should tell them, if you should write them a letter. I'm like, No, you don't have to tell them. You never have to tell them. The narcissist never wonders why you went no contact. They always know why. They're waiting for the day. I had mentioned my brother. I will call him by his real name, Don. Fun fact, I'm one of five kids. My sister is 40. I'm 38. Don is 37. Our brother, other brother is 35. Little sister is 26. My mom always told me and my older golden child sister that she never wanted girls. She only wanted boys. So when my brother finally came, her third child, she named him Bodon. Bo meaning God in Ukrainian and Donovich means given. So he is God given. Ugh. 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 She is so full of herself. 
back to dawn. During the day I skipped my first Thanksgiving in 2015, I had told both my brothers I would not be attending. My brother texted me during the late afternoon gathering and told me he loved me and knew why I didn't show up. You had warned me at the time about him, but didn't go into specifics. I was always the loyal, protective sister to my brothers. To this day, I cannot name one time they ever defended me. It reminds me of Tiffany. David Stratus's sister. No one wa uh, no one wanted to be Tiffany. I love the video you made of that story. Fast forward to 2020, the shutdown and forcing myself to walk outside daily since March made me re-examine my life. I started taking stock. I was super lonely, yet I had this big family. We were fractured. In 2015, where I left off, I was ready to go no contact. I was sidelined earlier in September 2015 when I was rear-ended while sitting at a red light, sending me to the ER. I had a severe neck injury. I experienced trauma and post-traumatic stress. It didn't get realized until I was on a flight <clears throat> December 2015 to attend my golden child's sister's MBA graduation graduation yes she could have graduated in spring but that would mean being considerate <clears throat> so you're flying out there after you already had skipped so this is december 2015 and you had skipped you would skip thanksgiving the month before so it's 2015 so this is a month later after skipping your first thanksgiving and you're now flying out to see her I had a panic attack on the plane. I won't go into further detail as this might trigger someone with the same fear of confined spaces. I had no issues flying and traveled often, but being trapped in the car, having a panic attack, and then a few more in the ambulance in the hospital. Also, that's not why you had a panic attack, because of fear of flying. You had a panic attack because you were throwing yourself into, into the dungeon you had just tried to eliminate yourself from the month before. Going right back into the lion's pit. Whether or not you realized your family members, your brothers and sisters never lifted a finger for you in the past. Whether you subconsciously on some le level, your body's shutting you down and telling you, don't do this. This is, this is not a good idea. Also, no one in my family checked on my health after the accident. No text, no phone call, nothing. That was very revealing to me, as it should have been. They don't, they don't give a shit about you. Due to my health and the isolation, the momentum I had in 2015 was sidelined. In 2016, I regressed and stopped watching NPD content. Uh, that's not necessarily a regression. That's just... You know, you can only take so much of this at, at, at a given time. I also became weak and depressed and allowed my narcissistic parents and their flying monkeys back in my life. Well, maybe it was a mistake. I have very limited memories of that year. By 2017, I was starting to take my life back. In 2018, I made a career move. In 2019, the new job sent me to London on business. I was thriving. I also bought my first home. Last November 2019, my little sister got her first apartment at 25. My mom convinced her to host, to host her first Thanksgiving. My mom would cook and bring all the food over. I came early and my sister had decorated the apartment with a beautiful fall theme. I complimented her and we had a nice moment. Then, two witch, then the two witches show up, my mom and golden child older sister. I learned my older sister is actually a covert narcissist and is good setting my mom off. I always thought it was my mom who controlled my sister. As the two witches approached, I went outside to help carry food in. I saw my golden child sister with a sinister grin. In my mind, I thought something is not right. She is plotting something and you should have bolted right there and then. When my sister entered the house, she was rude to my little sister and pissed all over her home. My little sister is borderline and blew a lid. Little sister started yelling. Then go, Jesus, sounds like, sounds like my mother Virginia and her sisters. I mean, that's just what it sounds. Same, same deal. 
Then the golden child went, sat down, and started fake crying. This set off the overt narcissist mother. They both went after my little sister. Tried to defuse. I tried to defuse. Mind you, this is already after you went no contact four years earlier in 2015 at, at, at Thanksgiving. Like, none of this should be a surprise to you. None of it. Usually I was getting attacked by the three of them. Gang stalking. Later in January, my little sister said she stood at the top of the garage roof and was going to commit suicide that night. Oh, well, that's borderline because you're not going to kill yourself jumping off a garage roof. The reason I'm sharing the above is by 2018 and 2019, I had become the gray man. I was limited contact, but they still had access to me and I was pretending. They had no clue. My mom believed I was under her, under her control and I let her. I wanted, once, I wanted for once to know what it was like on the, on the other side. After the, Thanksgiving, after the Thanksgiving incident, my mom called me. It was a one-way conversation where she repeated stories I've heard many times before. She decided to tell me she no longer loved my little sister as much or cared for her as she did before Thanksgiving. It was my mom's sick way to tell me I had replaced my mom's little sister. Man, this is just how... This is Understand how what what is going on. This is many. This is the communist model. This is the Marxist model in action happening in your personal life. It's all about divide and conquer and erasing the people that piss you off and replacing them, and then gang stalking the people you don't like to get them under control and to get them to do what you want their way. I mean, it is no. It is no mystery that your mother is an old communist block Cold War woman. This I've seen this time and time and time again. They live in narcissism. They live in being sociopaths. Cold, calculating, manipulative, controlling sociopaths. You knew it in 2015. You knew it in 2015 when you went when you went no contact. You knew your family and your brothers and sisters really didn't give fuck all about you then. Nothing changes. And you're finding that, and unfortunately you had to find that out the hard, you're finding that out the hard way through experience. The reason you had the panic attack a month after going no contact the first time was not because you all of a sudden became claustrophobic and were afraid of flying. No, that was your body shutting you down, telling you, don't fucking do this, Tanya. Don't fucking do this. Don't throw yourself back to that old commie bitch. Now, she might have moved here because she hated communism and living under it, but she sure took all the lessons of communism and applied it to her own personal life and, 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 and to her daughters and to her family. Didn't she? Didn't she? I had wanted to be accepted all my life by this woman, and she does it. And it's, she doesn't accept anybody. The narcissist doesn't fully accept anybody because they can erase anybody at the drop of a dime. Just Photoshop you out, erase you, you never replace, remove and replace, remove and replace. She'll never ex fully accept you. She'll act like she accepts you. She'll act, but it's not. The second, the second you do something to piss her off, Remove and replace like you never existed. This is why you didn't have to tell them why you went no contact the first time. They knew. They all knew. Wasn't a surprise. I had wanted to be accepted all my life by this woman in the way she does it in a sick way where she rejects one daughter only to replace her with another daughter. I was still pretending that, that it was 
That was it for me. Sick. I was the only one who stayed with my little sister that night because I saw how distraught she was and I was afraid she was going to hurt herself. The same kindness she never bestowed on me. At my house closing next month, my mom kept inviting herself to attend. She kept calling herself a lucky charm. I'm glad she had called me at work because I was rolling my eyes. She had no business to be there. I politely declined her invitation. This woman is calling you at your job. This woman who you've earned family, who you've already tried to go no contact from because you know they're completely toxic and they don't give fuck all about you. Now, you're, she's, not only is she back in your life, she's calling you at work and trying to invite yourself into the home you just bought to take away what? Your one place where you can have boundaries and someplace say and, and, and be away from it. You better put a you better you better get back on the no contract train real goddamn quick, Tanya. Real quick. She had no business to be there. I politely declined her invitation. Good. Then the shutdown happened in 2020. It was a blessing for me. My mom's birthday is in April. I got to skip that because no gatherings were allowed. By the time Mother's Day rolled around, I made sure not to call or text her. Usually we were subjected to a Mother's Day thing. This year I got to skip all that. By May I had decided I wanted to relocate. My plan is still a go. That plan is still a go. I ignore all my parents' calls and texts. Yesterday, after watching another NPD video by you, I was moved. I was so moved, I blocked my mom, dad, grandma, older and younger sister. I had a gut feeling not, not to do this. I felt it would set them off. I wanted to see what would happen. Well, tonight, my brother Dan, my brother Don called and texted me at roughly 10 p.m. that my parents are worried and were driving over for proof of life. These assholes are escalating. This week I plan on filing a police report and hiring a lawyer. I am a single woman. I am afraid what these abusers are going to do. I had planned to write to you when I located in a new state this fall, but the narcissist can smell when their steady stream of supplies about to, to exit for the last time. On August 4th, my mom broke into my home with the guise of concern. And understand something. If they're coming to your house, you do not have to open the door. You don't have to open the door. I I, I had this with another with another subscriber, almost identical, and I did a video for her. And her husband tried to threaten me. Um, where her family showed up. Same tactic. Her family showed up at her house demanding entry. And the police were called, and I told her, the police, the police were called to call the police. You don't have to explain why or how that you're, it's, you're the, you just don't want them there. And that's how it went. And that's how it worked. That, that woman is also from another former communist bloc country. On August 1st, 4th, my mom broke into my home with the guise of concern. Imagine sitting, working from home, and suddenly hearing someone breaking in. How old is this woman? I mean, how old is this woman? She's breaking in. If you're 40, how old is she? 65? I panicked. It was all happening so fast. I thought they would... They would leave me alone after my brother sent them a text around 11 p.m. on August 3rd that I was okay and not to contact me. But this just gave the green light for the parents to come over. Not only that, break into my home. I panicked. I heard multiple attempts with different keys. The doorbell did not ring. There was no knock, just the sound of someone breaking in. My cat and I jumped up, looked at each other in fear. I knew it was them, but was it? I could not sleep the night before. I barricaded my front door. It was not enough. More on that later. Because I could not sleep the night before, I found an old recorder. Often when the abuse happens, it is not documented. And then my mother or siblings deny or gaslight or outright lie. This time, I would not be tricked. This time, I was ready. 
earlier earlier on the morning of August 4th, I had to drop my car at the shop for repair. I debated whether to take an Uber and work from Panera Bread or go home while my car was at the shop. <clears throat> but it would mean my cat would be home alone. Cats can, uh, trust me, cats are fine for weeks. So long, as long as they got food and water, cats are fine. They're fine. I feared the narcissist would show up and traumatize him. Both parents have killed animals before with the guys it was, it was best for the animal. So no, I did not want to take any chances. If they showed up, I was going to be there no matter how scared I was. So at 10.30, I hear the sound of my front door, someone breaking in. I froze. What do I do? I thought in my head. I paused the song playing and grabbed my phone and recorder and started recording. I was shaking. As seconds passed, I heard more attempts to open the door. Knock, no knock, no are you there, nothing. I record 40 seconds of video and then realize they were about to open the door. I stopped the video and dialed 911. Then the door opens with resistance at the barricade I put up the night before was not good enough. I see my mom emerge and announce, Tanya. I was, she was at the bottom of the stairs. Our, eye met, our eyes met. I told her, get out. I said, I'm here to check. She said, I'm here to check on you. You're not responding to our phone calls. I said, get out. She started walking up the stairs and I told her I was calling the police. She said, but I'm your mom. And I ignored and ignored my command. I dialed 911 on speaker. The op, the operator answered right away. My mom started debating with the 911 operator. Then when she realized I was serious and the police were on the way, she ran out of my house and into her van and sped away. Shaking, I gave the information and questions to the to the 911 and and in question information and questions the 911 operator asked. I'm going to ask, do they have keys? So how did they open the door? Did they break the door? I mean, if did you change the locks on the on the apartment on your house? Then my mom asked that they asked for my mom's physical description, car address, and phone number. Two police officers responded minutes later. I greeted them at my front door. I am still undecided about my experience with them and what seems like an interrogation. The male officer was trying to vet my story. There is no story to vet here. Like if you're getting into she did, all you have to say is, I didn't want them in the house. She forced her way in. Now, if she still had a key to the house that you didn't change the locks on, it's going to be a little harder for you to, you should have changed the locks on the door if you didn't. I can appreciate he has a difficult job of finding the truth, so I tried to remain calm despite how uncomfortable I was with his questioning. Once he got my statement, he left me with the female police officer and went back to his squad car and called my mom for her statement. Once I was alone with the female police officer, I could collect my thoughts and not feel threatened. I saw she believed me based on her repetitive questioning and, giving, and me giving consistent responses. When the male police officer returned after speaking with my mom, his demeanor changed. He had her on speakerphone, and I could hear and I could hear her arrogance and disrespect for him. He told me my mom claimed I gave her a key to my home the night before. I repeatedly told the office. <clears throat> I repeatedly told the office I had recorded everything and had text messages to prove my story. He believed me, but he could not say it. I told him I wanted to hire an attorney and he gave me guidance on how to take this to family court. I got a warning right away not to do this, although I did not show this to the officers. My mom could lie so easily to a police officer then she would have a field day in family court and deploy her flying monkeys. My two sisters and two brothers to lie for her. It's too big of a risk. I will retain an attorney instead. I am openly telling my story to trusted neighbors, coworkers, and friends. I'm not keeping it secret anymore. Thankfully, my neighbor walked by as I was standing with the officers and she asked if I was okay in front of them. I spoke with her last night and told her what happened. I hear these stories in court. Did you tell anyone? And I don't want that to be used against me just because I don't want the world to know I'm an adult child and 
and an and an adult of physical, emotional, and some sexual abuse by my parents. We all want to present our best selves. However, that keeps the narcissist secrets. I'm just making sure. All right. So there was some other, uh, I was just making sure that, uh, that I'm not missing anything here. Look, Tanya, <clears throat> what, trying to fight with them in family court where you're living right now is not, is, is not the course of action you should be taking. If you want to keep them away, then get some kind of order, if it's necessary, to keep them away, okay? If you've already made the decision to leave, to relocate to another state and go no con, then do it then do it and don't look back. Understand something. I'm not trying to say, you know, this happened because because you didn't listen to my to my advice. I, uh, like, I, I don't want to say I told you so, but everybody who breaks, no contact. This is a lesson for you. I told you so. It doesn't work out. When you break, no, there's a reason why you go no contact in the first place. Your body a month later was shutting you down, telling you to stay away from these people, and you didn't listen. You didn't listen. Because you say you have this, you have this big. It's tough when you have people, when you have a lot of people that you have blood relationship with, that you have DNA relationship with. It's a hard pill to swallow that you can have nothing to do with these people. But that's the fact, because none of them. Tanya, give a shit about you. None of them. Your goal here should not be to trifle with your family in family court. Your only goal here is because you've already made the decision to get up and relocate somewhere completely new is to do that. Trying to fight these people in a place where you're not even going to be comfortable or going to make permanent is pointless. Is pointless. Your story has been read on this channel, not your specific, okay? You, even though you've done several videos, this story repeats itself over and over and over again. You are not going to be the exception. I'm sorry. You're not going to be the exception to the no contact rule. You're just, you're just not. Nobody is. Nobody is. These people don't fix themselves. They don't want to fix themselves. They have no desire to fix themselves. The second you went back, you were getting red flag after red flag after red flag that nothing has changed. The only time you had anything going for you, that you, that where, you where you were able to focus and move on is when they were completely out of your fucking life. So why are you sabotaging yourself and bringing them back in? So I hope that helps, Tanya. Thank you so much for your contribution and story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, something you'd like me to expose, you'd like to have a private video made, set up a Skype or phone call, or you'd just like to make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away because this channel is 100% demonetized by YouTube. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been Generation X Politics. Take care.